Hello and welcome to Bite My Pie. In today's video we're going to take the humble raspberry pie and then we're going to put it on a diet. Well maybe not quite like that but the software that we're looking at is called Diet Pie. So what is Diet Pie and why should we care? If you've ever played around with a raspberry pie before you might have noticed that as good as some of the projects are they're not always the easiest to get started with. And that's where this software comes in. Diet Pie gives us an easy to use interface that does a lot of the heavy lifting and makes installing some of the most popular titles an absolute breeze. So if this sounds appealing to you, stick around. As the name suggests, Diet Pie is very lightweight. In fact, with images starting at 400 megabytes in size, that's around three times lighter than Raspbian Lite, which in itself is a trimmed down version of the full fat official operating system for the Raspberry Pi. Like Raspbian, Diet Pie is also based on the Linux distribution that's known as Debian. With Diet Pie, you can easily install an entire raft of software whether you'd like to set up a media center, a virtual private network or VPN, an audio streamer for your music, a retro gaming console, or even your own personal cloud storage. The list goes on. Diet Pie can help you quickly and easily install a whole range of programs to suit almost any requirement you might have. To demonstrate the process, we'll be installing a photo gallery that you can view through your web browser. But the procedure is basically the same no matter what title you want to install. So let's get going. The first thing we need to do is open our web browser. And from there we're going to go to dietpie.com. And if you look at the menu along the top of the screen, we want the download tab. As you can see, despite its name, Diet Pie works on a whole range of devices, most of them being single board computers like the Raspberry Pi. As the aim is to put it on a Pi, click the plus sign to reveal the Raspberry Pi link, and then we need to click the download icon to grab the image. I'm going to click the save button to save that to my computer, and now that we've got that, we need to grab another piece of software. So this time we're going to search for Etcher and it's this link here at Bellina.io. If you're not familiar with this program already, it's going to allow us to copy the Diet Pi image onto the micro SD card for our Raspberry Pi. While you could download and install the full program, I'm going to click the little drop down arrow here and grab the Etcher for Windows portable version. And again I'm going to save that to my downloads directory. Once that's finished downloading we just need one more program. So this time search for 7-zip and it's this one here, 7-zip.org. Be sure to get the stable version and not the alpha release. And unless your computer is pretty old, you're going to want the 64-bit version here. So let's save that one as well. And when the download's finished, you can close your web browser. Right, let's open File Explorer and navigate to the Downloads folder. And obviously you should have the three items that you've just downloaded. Okay, so first up, double-click on the 7-zip installer and say yes to run that and now we're going to click on install and then we can close it. The reason we need 7-zip is that this diet pi image file is compressed in the 7-zip or 7z format. Now that we've got 7-zip installed if we right click on the diet pi file you can see we've got this 7-zip entry on the context menu and if we come over to the various options, we need to click on Extract here. 
Now that it's extracted, you can see we've got this diet pi disk image file, which means we're now ready to copy it to our micro SD card. If you haven't already, now's the time to connect your micro SD card to your computer. It's recommended that you use a card of at least 4GB in size. Having said that, as you'll see as we go through the video, the actual size will depend on the software you're planning to use Diet Pi to help you install. That being the case, I'd go with the biggest one you can lay your hands on. For this video, I'll be using a 32GB Class 10 Kingston micro SD card. Right, let's get the image copied. So double click on the Bellina Etcher Portable program to launch it. Then we need to select Flash from File and we can choose our Diet Pi image and click Open. Hopefully it will automatically detect your memory card. If not, just unplug it and reconnect it again. And then we can click Flash. Click on Yes to get rid of the Windows NAG screen. And now it's going to start flashing our micro SD card for us. So this process will take a few minutes. I'll pause the video and come back when it's complete. Marvellous! Now that that's done we can close the program. If you're going to connect your Raspberry Pi to your router with an Ethernet cable you can eject the micro SD card now. Alternatively to use Wi-Fi you need to carry out the following steps. First open File Explorer. You should see the boot partition on the micro SD card here, so click on that. We're looking for this Diet Pi text file here. Just be sure that when you double click on it, it opens in a text editor like Notepad and not a word processor like Microsoft Word. Inside this text file, we're looking for the networking options section and specifically the auto setup net Wi Fi enabled line. Then you just need to change this 0 to a 1. That will ensure that the Pi's Wi-Fi is turned on. So we can go to File and save that and close. And then back in the boot partition we need to look for the Diet Pi hyphen Wi-Fi entry and double click that. In here there's two parts we're interested in. Our Wi-Fi's SSID which is the name of your wireless network and your Wi-Fi's key. So on the a Wi-Fi underscore SSID 0 line I'm going to enter my wireless network name here which for me is Byte My Pi and then here on this line a Wi-Fi underscore key 0 I'm going to enter my Wi-Fi key or wireless security passphrase. So likewise pop yours in too. And then if we save that file as well and close it. And now you can eject your micro SD card like so. OK, pop the card in your Raspberry Pi and power it on. And wait for it to boot to the login screen. When Diet Pi has booted, as instructed on the screen, we need to hit the return key on our keyboard. And now we can log in as it tells us with the username of root, press enter after entering it, and the password of Diet Pi, and press enter again. Here we just need to agree to the license, so press enter on your keyboard again to do so. And now we're given the opportunity to change the default global software password. When you use Diet Pi to install new software, this will be the default password that's assigned to that software. By default that would be Diet Pi, but let's use the tab key on the keyboard to move across and press enter to change that now. So pop in your new password here and press enter. Then type it in again to confirm it and press enter once more. OK. Diet Pi has two accounts. There's root, which is the main system account, and then there's a standard account, simply named Diet Pi. By default, the password for both of them is set to Diet Pi. 
but here we can change that to something else. As it tells us on the screen it's recommended to set this to something different than the global software password that we just set a moment ago. So let's select OK to change them. Again we just need to pop in the new password here and then we just need to confirm it. I'm not planning on using the serial console so to save a few system resources I'm going to disable it here by selecting OK. Right, we've almost finished the installation process for Diet Pi. The final step is to use the cursor keys on your keyboard to go down to the install option and select that with the enter key. And then if we toggle over to OK, as it tells us this will set up Diet Pi as a pure minimal image. So hit the enter key to do precisely that. Here you've got the option to take part in the Diet Pi survey. I'm not a huge fan of surveys so I'm going to leave it on opt out and hit the tab key to go to OK and press enter to select it. And to finish off we'll just do a quick restart by typing reboot and pressing enter. Great that's Diet Pi installed so let's hit the return key and log back in as root with our new password. Right, now as you can see on the screen, Diet Pi handily gives us some of the commands that can be run from the command prompt. Now don't panic, almost everything can be done through an easy to use menu driven interface as you'll see in a moment. In fact, most of the commands simply act as shortcuts taking you directly to the relevant section of the menu. And if you're not at all interested in typing in any more text than you have to, about the only command you really need to know is the top one, Diet Pi hyphen launcher, as entering this will get you to the aforementioned menu interface. But for those of you who like the terminal, I'll quickly go through a few of the options here. So next down the list we've got Diet Pi hyphen config. As the name suggests, this will take you straight into Diet Pi's configuration tools. Then we've got Diet Pi hyphen software which again has a very literal name and will take you into the software installation section of DietPy. HTOP is a standard Linux command and if we type that in and press enter that will display a resource monitor. You can press F10 on your keyboard to come out of that. As with any Linux distro we can type clear and press enter to clear our screen. And the last command that was listed was CPU, which if we enter that, it gives us information about our processor. Diet Pi has a range of commands built in. I've listed some of the main ones here. As you can see, on the whole they have fairly obvious names that give you a pretty good idea of what they do. For example, Diet Pi Sync allows you to synchronise the contents of two directories with one another. However, if you're not that familiar with Linux, you may be wondering what Diet Pi Cron does. To answer that question, this allows you to set up scheduled tasks. So if typing in commands is your sort of thing, feel free to try these out to save yourself some time. But enough with the terminal stuff, let's get into the more user-friendly menu. And as I mentioned a moment ago, to do that we just need to type in Diet Pi hyphen launcher and press enter. Let's first take a peek around the menu system. You may have already noticed that several of the names are the same as the Diet Pi commands we just looked at, as selecting these will take you to the same place as running the command. So the menu entries are split into groups. We've got Install Optimized Software, Configuration, Diet Pi Updates, Backups Stroke Sync, maintenance and miss for miscellaneous. If we use the cursor keys to move up and highlight Diet Pi software and then press enter, this will take us into the Diet Pi software menu. I'm not going to go through all of the options because we'd be here all day. Instead I'll show you the main things you need to be aware of. 
So obviously you'd come into this software menu to either install or uninstall software on top of DietPy. If you know what you're looking for you can come down to the search option and go in here and type in the title to search for it. Now if at any point you want to go back to the last screen you can either press the escape key on your keyboard which will take you straight back there or alternatively you can press the tab key to come down to these options and then select the relevant one. If you're not sure what software you want to install then we've got two entries here software optimized and software additional. Most of the programs you're probably likely to want will be in software optimized. As you can see they're grouped into various sections. So we've got desktops where you could install a full Linux desktop like LXDE or Mate. There's remote desktop access where you could set up a VNC server. There's the media systems section. Here there's all kinds of goodies. You could for example install the excellent Kodi Media Center. Or if that doesn't take your fancy there's Plex and MB in there too. If you scroll down the list you'll see that there are absolutely loads of titles in here. So hopefully you're starting to appreciate that once we've got DietPy installed we can then set up any of these programs of our choosing. Let's return to the main software menu by pressing the escape key. As I mentioned before we've also got the software additional entry. This little message informs us that DietPy will simplify the installation process. So we only need to choose the software that we want. And then DietPy will take care of any extra packages that that software needs to run. So hit enter to select OK. Even at a quick glance you can see that this software is a lot more specialised than the programmes found in the software optimised section. Nevertheless you may find something of use in here. OK if we back out of there and exit out of the software menu. We haven't made any changes yet so that's fine to proceed. Right, Diet Pi Config. So as the name suggests this is where you can make all of your configuration changes. Things such as picture, sound, even network settings can be altered in here. Depending on what you intend to use your Raspberry Pi for, you may need to explore different menu options. For example, if you were going to turn it into a file server, you'd probably want to have a look in the DietPy Drive Manager. If you're planning on setting up a media center like Kodi, you're probably going to want that to start automatically each time you turn the Raspberry Pi on. Whatever you choose to install, it's well worth from time to time coming into DietPy Update just to make sure that the system is up to date. Also, after you've gone to the trouble of setting everything up just how you want it, it's well worth coming into the DietPy backup section. From this new menu, we can create a backup. This will create the backup on the Raspberry Pi's microSD card itself. So if you were doing this for real, after the backups run, you're going to want to copy that to somewhere else as leaving the backup on the device itself is not really a great idea. So we'll run the backup now and I'll show you how to copy that to another computer in a little bit. So make a note of the backup location and then you can press enter to finish. And if you press the tab key and then press enter again. Now if at some point in the future you needed to restore the backup you'd come down to here, you'd first need to make sure that the backup has been copied back to its original location, which again we'll look at a bit later, but for now we can cancel out of that. Right, let's exit out of the backup section and then we can say OK. Feel free to explore any of the other menu options, but the time has now come to start installing some software. So as I mentioned earlier we're going to set up an image gallery that can be viewed through your web browser but the steps we'll be taking are similar regardless of the program you intend to install. 
So first things first, let's navigate up to Diet Pi software and select that. And then we're going to go into the software optimized section. From here you want to scroll down until you get to the social and search group. And then we have the image gallery software. Now as it tells us at the top of the screen you simply need to press the spacebar to select that software and then as you can see it adds an asterisk next to it and then if we press the tab key that will come down to OK and we can press enter to select that. Right now although we've selected the software we want to install to actually install it we need to come down to the install section here and enter that. So you can check on the screen that it's going to install the software we've asked it to. You should also make a note of this URL here as it contains useful information about the software some of which may be required in order to use it. So let's start installing our image gallery by selecting OK. Now that the installation is complete it just wants to carry out a reboot so press enter to do just that. And then we need to log back in with our root credentials. And then let's type Diet Pi Launcher and press enter to get back into the menu system. You may have noticed that the Raspberry Pi's IP address is listed at the top of the screen. As Diet Pi is now running a web server to host our images for the gallery, you could type this IP address into a web browser on any computer on your home network and it should now be showing a placeholder page. So I'll just demonstrate that now from in Windows by launching Google Chrome and in the address bar at the top typing HTTP colon double forward slash and then that IP address of the Raspberry Pi. So enter whatever yours is here and press enter. And as you can see there's the placeholder page that I mentioned which proves that the web server is up and running and ready to host our image gallery. Now if you plan on accessing the gallery by using the IP address it would be a good idea to go into your router and reserve this IP whatever yours is so that it doesn't change when the Raspberry Pi gets rebooted. Or alternatively and probably a better method is to use the Raspberry Pi's host name which in this case is Diet Pi. So to do that we'd type in HTTP colon double forward slash and then Diet Pi and press enter. And so long as DNS is working correctly on your home network you should still be looking at the same placeholder page. The advantage of this method is that if the Raspberry Pi's IP address does change we should still be able to access it through its Diet Pi hostname. So if you now enter the word gallery after the trailing slash, so in other words we've got Diet Pi forward slash gallery and press enter, you can see the bare bones of the image gallery. Make a note of this URL as it's this address that you'll type into a web browser on any device on your home network to access your gallery. This would be a good opportunity to open up a new browser tab and go to that Diet Pi website address we noted down earlier. So that's dietpi.com forward slash software. And rather than trawling through the entire software list, if you recall the image gallery was in the social section. And here it is, photo gallery or image gallery. So click the plus sign there. And then if we click this link, how do I use this software? It now gives us more information about the image gallery. If we close that tab and go back to all, obviously you can use this website to look up extra information about any of the software that you install within Diet Pi. 
Now back in the image gallery at the moment things are looking a little bit sparse. We have these two default folders dietpy and tr-0. So let's take a quick peek in each of those. Yes, not really a lot going on at the moment. That being the case, I think we should take a look at how we can begin populating it with some pretty pictures. To copy images onto our Raspberry Pi into the image gallery, we're going to use SFTP or the Secure File Transfer Protocol to give it its full name. And to do this, back in the DietPy launcher, we're going to need to install an additional piece of software. So let's go up to DietPy software. And this time we're going to come down to SSH server and select that. Now at the moment it's currently running DropBear, which is fine as a lightweight SSH server. But unfortunately it doesn't support SFTP which is the protocol we're going to be using to transfer our photos. So all we need to do is move down to open SSH and then press enter to select that instead. And as it tells us, we now need to install open SSH. And when we do that, drop bear will be automatically uninstalled. So let's hit enter there. Now let's come down to install and select OK to begin the installation. Then we just need to reboot our Raspberry Pi. While the Raspberry Pi is rebooting, back on our Windows computer we're going to grab some software to carry out our photo transfers. So if it's not already, open your web browser and this time we're going to search for FileZilla and it's this entry you want, the FileZilla project.org. We only want the client as we're going to connect to the open SSH server that we just installed on the Raspberry Pi. So click on the download link for the client here. FileZilla is actually cross-platform supporting Windows, Mac and Linux. I'm going to download the Windows client and then I just want the standard version here. So let's save that to the downloads directory. When it's finished downloading you can close your web browser. Right, let's open File Explorer, navigate to download and double click FileZilla to start the installation. We can agree to the Windows NAG screen and then also agree to the license. I'm going to leave it on anyone being able to use this program and click next. I'll leave all of these boxes checked and add a desktop shortcut as well and then click next again and then click next to install it in the program files directory. Click next here to create a start menu entry for FileZilla and that's it. Click finish to close the setup wizard. We can also close File Explorer. You can click any of these links to get extra help with the program. But I'm going to walk you through how we're going to use it now. So let's click OK to close the welcome screen. The first thing we need to do is to connect to DietPy through FileZilla. You could enter the connection details across the top here and then click Quick Connect. That's fine for a one-off connection. But as you're likely to be constantly adding to your image gallery, it's a good idea to let FileZilla save the connection information. So to do this, we can click this little site manager icon at the top left. And from here, we want to create a new site. So give it a meaningful name such as DietPy. And on the right hand side, next to protocol, click the drop down list and select SFTP. In the host box you can either enter the IP address of your Raspberry Pi or its host name which I'll put in here. And then we want it to connect on port 22. Now for the logon type I like to choose ask for a password for security so that it asks me each time. What you choose is entirely up to you. 
but either way you're going to want to put in the user which will be root and then we can click OK. Here FileZilla is just checking our password preferences so you can have it save your passwords, not save your passwords or even save your passwords and protect them with a master password. As I said I'm not going to have it save my passwords at all so I'll select that option there and click OK. And now if we come back up to the site manager icon and click the little drop down list we've got the entry we just created. So all we need to do to connect to our Raspberry Pi is click the entry here. If like me you set it to ask for your password each time pop your root accounts password in here and then we can click OK. Because it's the first time we're connecting and it's an encrypted connection it's showing us the SSH server's fingerprints here. To stop this prompt popping up every time you log in you can tick this little box always trust this host and add the key to the cache and then click OK. And that's it we're now logged in remotely to our Raspberry Pi. If you've not used FileZilla before you might be wondering what's what but don't worry it's very straightforward to use. Basically the left hand side here is our local Windows machine the computer I'm on now and the right hand side here is the remote computer our Raspberry Pi. If we look at the Windows directories you'll see your user account that you've logged onto the computer with, in my case Byte My Pi. And by clicking the little plus sign to the left of that I can expand the home directory. What I'm looking for if I scroll down is the pictures folder so I can select that here. And in this section now that pictures is selected we can see the JPEGs that I've got saved inside the folder. Looking at the Diet Pi side of things, we first need to navigate to the directory of the image gallery. Because the Raspberry Pi is running Linux, the directory structure is a bit different from Windows. If we select this forward slash here, that's what's known as the root directory. You can think of it as being like the C drive in Windows. To find the location of our image gallery we need to scroll down to the var folder and then if we click the little plus symbol to the left of it to expand the directory we now need to scroll down again and select the www folder and if we expand this folder as well we can now click on our gallery. You may remember when we looked at the gallery through our web browser we had these two folders Diet Pi and TR0. If we double click on TR0 here there's the three images that we saw earlier. You may well not want any of these sample images. Let's say for example I want to get rid of the entire TR0 folder. To do so, simply right click on it and then from the drop down context menu, left click on delete. You could in the same way delete individual images, but obviously deleting the entire directory is going to remove all of the images within it as well. So let's click yes to remove that folder. Just as we can remove folders, we can add them as well. So to do that, right click inside the gallery folder and choose create directory. Then you can give it a name, so I'm just going to call it my pics and click OK. And now if we double click our new folder, we're ready to start adding our images. To do that, if I single left click on the first image and then hold down the shift key on my keyboard, and single left click the last image that will select all of the pictures and now it's just a case of hovering your pointer over them holding down the left click button on your mouse and then dragging them across into the remote directory and releasing the mouse button
not only should the images show up in our newly created directory but you can also see if you look down at the bottom it shows us that we've got three successful transfers and that's how you put your pictures into the image gallery if that's not straightforward enough now I'll show you a time-saving tip to make doing this even easier when we just carried out this process we had to manually navigate to both the pictures directory on our local Windows computer and to the gallery folder on our remote Raspberry Pi rather than having to do that every time we open FileZilla we can get the program to remember these directories for us so to do this let's come back up and open the site manager again make sure that Diet Pi is selected and then click on the advanced tab if we move this down a touch so that we can see what's behind it the local directory we want to open if we click in that box is C colon backslash users backslash the name of your user which for me is by my pie backslash pictures and backslash and then the remote directory we want it to open if we click in that box is forward slash var forward slash www forward slash gallery forward slash and then we can click OK. Now to quickly demonstrate what that's done, let's close FileZilla. Now when we double click it to launch the program again, come up to the Site Manager drop down and connect to Diet Pi, and then enter your password and click OK. And as you can see, straight away it's took us to our Pictures directory on the Windows side and it's gone and opened the gallery directory on Diet Pi. Obviously this will make adding additional photos to the image gallery much faster. Now I know I've only added one new folder and three new images but the process is the same regardless of how many you're adding. A quick tip if any of the files or folders that you're expecting to see don't show up in FileZilla, if you come up to the top here, there's these two arrows which refresh the file and folder lists, so you just click that and then it should update to show what you're expecting. Before we close FileZilla, earlier we looked at backing up DietPy. And if you recall, that backup is actually saved to the Raspberry Pi's micro SD card. So we need to copy that to another computer. And then should disaster strike, we'll still be able to recover our Diet Pi setup. To do this, you guessed it, we can use FileZilla. All we need to do is navigate to the Diet Pi directory where the backup was created. So if we go into MNT or mount, there it is, Diet Pi Backup. Then you just need to decide what directory you're going to copy it to on your local computer. Let's say Documents for example. And then in the same way that we copied our images, only this time in reverse because we're going from the remote Raspberry Pi to the local computer you would click and drag the Diet Pi backup folder across into documents and let go. I'm not going to do that now because it does take a little while but you get the idea. So if the day ever came when you did need to restore your backup you'd simply copy it from the local computer back into the MNT directory on the Raspberry Pi. Then as we saw earlier back in the Diet Pi launcher you could come back into Diet Pi backup and into the restore section and run the restore. But now that we've finished with FileZilla, we can close the program and go and have a look at our image gallery. So, to do that, let's fire up a web browser. Now, although I'm still on the Windows computer, you could be on any device you wanted within your home network, whether that be a smartphone, tablet, laptop or PC. So, within the browser, let's type in the address bar, http colon double forward slash 
diet pi forward slash gallery and press enter and straight away you can see that the tr0 directory that we deleted has gone we've still got diet pi but most importantly we've now got this new directory my pics you may have noticed that we're getting this message no images in gallery despite the fact that we know we've got pictures in those folders this often suggests a permissions problem on the web server so let's take a look at how to fix that now we can actually kill two birds with one stone because as part of this process I'm actually going to show you how to remotely log in to the Raspberry Pi being able to access Diet Pi in this way will allow you to disconnect the keyboard and monitor from your Raspberry Pi if you so wish so to do this from in Windows we're going to type in here cmd for the command prompt and press enter from here we're going to type ssh space the username that we're going to log into the pi with in this case root at and then you can either enter the ip address of the raspberry pi or the host name so in this case diet pi and press enter now as with filezilla because this is the first time that we're remotely connecting in from the command prompt through ssh it's showing us the security fingerprint because the connection is encrypted so to proceed we just need to type yes and then press enter and then we just need to type in the password for our root account and press enter again and hopefully this looks pretty familiar to you except rather than seeing this screen on the monitor connected to your Raspberry Pi we're now seeing it through the command prompt in Windows just before we fix the issue with the image gallery's web server you can see from the commands on screen that we can type diet pi hyphen launcher and press enter and we're now remotely connected to the exact same menu interface as we've been using previously directly on the raspberry pi so now if you need to make any changes to diet pi you can do so remotely from any computer on your home network let's just exit out of there and select OK to close the launcher now let's navigate to the web servers directory to do that we're going to type cd space forward slash var forward slash www and press enter we can take a good look at the contents by typing the command ls space dash L A and pressing enter and there's the entry for our gallery folder basically the problem is that this folder is currently owned by both the root user and root group and the web server itself is unable to write to this directory which is why it's unable to generate the thumbnails to fix this we need to enter two lines the first one is ch own space dash capital R space root colon www dash data space gallery forward slash this is going to change the ownership of the gallery directory we'll still have the root user but we'll now have the web servers group which is www dash data so press enter to make the change and then the second line we need to enter is ch mod space dash capital R seven seven zero space gallery forward slash what this will do is give both root and www dash data read write and execute or in other words full permissions on the gallery directory and then press enter to change that now although we've made the changes they won't actually take effect until the web server is restarted so to do that type system ctl space restart space light tpd and press enter to remotely disconnect or log out of the raspberry pi all we need to do is type exit and press enter that's it. 
we can now close the command prompt. Let's relaunch the web browser and go back to our image gallery dietpy forward slash gallery there we have it we've now got thumbnails so let's have a look at the photos we added by clicking on my pics and here's the three images that I uploaded so to have a proper look at them click on one If we look down at the bottom of the screen we've got these options so you can flick between them previous and next or you can close the image there to go back to the directory or if you'd like to leave them running to admire your handiwork you can click the slideshow button let's close out of that also if you select an image you've got this information button as well as giving us any extra information that's available with the image such as the resolution and the file size a nice feature is this download full size image link at the bottom if you imagine you were viewing this on a device that didn't have that photo you could click here and download it we also have the option down here to view the actual size of the image. This line here tells us where we are within the gallery, which at the moment is the MyPix folder. So if we click Home, that will take us back to the main gallery screen, and we can also close information. Then lastly, down here at the bottom right, we've got these little letters, SFPG. And if we click those, it takes us to the Image Gallery Developers website. Right, let's close out of our gallery. One last point, it was mentioned in passing earlier. If we look back in the DietPy software menu, just as we can install software, we can also uninstall it. This gives us a list of everything that's installed on the system at the moment. And then it's simply a matter of selecting the software you no longer require to remove it. And that about wraps things up for this one. As you've just witnessed, notwithstanding the odd technical issue, as we're dealing with computers after all, DietPy allows us to get quickly up and running with software that would usually be a lot more complex to set up. And of course that's the whole point of this Debian based operating system. To enable us to easily turn our Raspberry Pi, or most other types of computer system come to that, into almost anything that we want. So whether that be a host for creating a WordPress website, a media centre for movies or music, a camera surveillance system, or even a home automation platform, there's an extensive list. Whatever you'd like to do with Diet Pi, I hope that you now feel confident enough to give it a go. And most of all, remember to have fun. Well that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified when I post the next one, just click the bell icon. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.